What's up, y'all? It's Uncle Freedom coming to you again on another glorious and well-deserved day off. So, a little while back we talked about defensive ammo. So today we're going to go over my top 10 concealed carry rounds and why I pick them. So if that sounds like fun to you, go ahead and like, subscribe, and tell a friend because we are growing exponentially so at this point, and for that I truly do thank you. So, in my lifetime, I've always had a fascination with ballistics, what bullets do, and the end result, you know, whether that was hunting or when I got into the military and we started studying, you know, efficacy of 5.56 versus the 6.8, if anybody remembers that weird looking tuna fish shit that we had, the XM8 program, um, to the 8.55, to us going to 8.55A1, to the introduction of Mark 262, and all of those things led me into testing my own stuff. I never tested bullets with the anticipation of ever making a YouTube channel talking about it. I did it because I was hungry for knowledge and I wanted to know more about it. But now, since people are actually interested in this and we're talking about it here, you know, me and you, um, why not make a video and actually tell you the what and why of what I choose? So these are in order, but kind of not in order. You could pretty much substitute any of these at any point. Now, some of them I will notate when I would not necessarily pick them over some of the other ones. But first up... On that list is from Hornady. This is the Hornady Critical Duty. Specifically for 9mm, we're talking 124 grain plus P and 135 plus P. Critical Duty is kind of a unique fish. It was designed specifically to beat the FBI's testing protocols. That was wallboard, uh, uh, plywood, two, la two layers of metal, compound angle at autoglass, and still achieved the 12 to 16 inches of penetration, dumping its energy where it needed to thus increasing your chances of getting it stopped. There is a reason that FBI uses this, most law enforcement agencies use this, and I have seen it put to the test enough with Hornady doing the test into ballistics jail on site against whatever they put up against it that I really believe in the ammo. I truly do. Now, a lot of people, myself included, have always used 124 grain plus P. That was typically my carry ammo when I concealed carry. But the 124 grain plus piece stuff from Hornady and the Critical Duty line was not actually designed for a full-size handgun. It was designed more for those subcompacts like your Glock 26, your Pig, Sig P365. It was designed there to achieve optimal penetration and barrier performance and still dump its energy and not over-penetrate. This stuff is pretty damn good. So first off for me, the 124 grain plus piece coming out at 1,175 feet per second, generating about 380 foot-pounds of energy. The 135 plus P is coming out at 1,110 feet per second, doing 369. So either way, you're not going to go wrong with it, and it's my choice, and I carry it in almost every firearm I have, including my duty sidearm, and that is the Hornady Critical Duty 135s and 124s. You can institute the 175s for... Uh, 40 cal if you wanted to. I've never seen a critical duty round fail in person. Next up for me is everybody's favorite, Federal HST. Federal HST is just good stuff, guys. I mean, it's not as good as some of the other stuff, but it's damn close. And if you don't really anticipate having to shoot through auto glass and metal and shit a lot of the times, HST is going to do you just fine. Uh, so in that one, everybody's known and loved favorite for the HST here, tried and true, is the 124 grain plus P offering. So what we're looking at on that, guys, is 1,200 feet per second doing 396 foot-pounds of energy. It's good stuff. I've never had an issue with it. It's always been reliable. It's always running a gun. And very rarely have I seen it actually get defeated in ballistics gel test, though I have seen it lose in the sheet metal and the auto glass. So therefore, that's what it's worth. Next up. I actually pitted this one up against Hornady stuff at a Hornady demo one time, um, and it won. So <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with the stuff. As next offering is from Underwood Ammunition, but specifically the bullet we're talking about is Lehigh Defense. The Lehigh Defense bullet we're speaking of is the 90 grain Extreme Defender. Yeah, that really cool Phillips screwdriver bit of a bullet. This stuff works off of fluid dynamics, so it actually uses the flutes inside of the bullet itself to displace material in your mostly liquid body and create a wound cavity instead of opening up. This is a great option for places where you cannot carry an expanding bullet. I'm sorry that you live in a non-free state and where people would rather you have over penetration than actually doing its job. However, the Extreme Defenders passed flying colors, all FBI protocols. It is passed every time I have ever done it with flying colors. Nasty wound channels, always ideal penetration between 12 and 16 inches. It didn't matter what it hit, whether it was bear gel or auto glass, it always worked. 
So that stuff right there is coming out hot. If you buy the box from Underwood, which you can get at Midway.com, you're looking at about 1,475 feet per second in the plus P variety doing 435 foot-pounds of energy. If you are a hand loader, here's a caveat for you. You can buy those bullets, and I will tell you buying those bullets, I have hot rotted them up to 1,560 foot-pounds of energy, or 1,560 feet per second. My God, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? 1,500 foot-pounds of energy out of a handgun? Holy shit. Uh, so 1,560 feet per second. All of my chronograph data is off of a Crony Deluxe or a Competition Electronics Pro Chrono um, DLX, and I've also used the Caldwell, though it's not as accurate as the other two. I've confirmed a lot of these with a lab radar as well. Backyard scientist. So anyway, with that stuff, at the 1560 mark, we are looking at 486 foot-pounds of energy. That's pretty damn stellar, although I will tell you it is not safe for use in all handguns, so reload that shit at your own you know, your own despair, if you will. But the factory offering from, offering from Underwood performed fantastic. And that was actually what we put up against Hornady was a factory loading. So next up from there is the Winchester Defender or the Ranger T-Series. Specifically, the 124 grain plus P. 1,200 feet per second, 396 foot-pounds of energy. Sounds similar if you think about the HST, but the bullet design is kind of where it makes its money. Now, this is not a 9mm. This is a 40 cal, but it's the exact same bullet, and they perform identically when I've done them in test. You're looking at a consistent 13 to 18 inches of penetration, so a little deeper. Gets torn up by auto glass a little more, but it still stays in the block and does not fail. That said, I have seen this fail sometimes, but not with any real regularity or consistency. Shooting it through everything but auto glass, it worked every time. This stuff is nasty. This is the black talon bullet. That Defender round or the Ranger T, that is the black talon. That's the one that when it opens up, you get these really nasty spike things out on the side that do a lot of tissue damage when they come through back in the uh, days when they were released. It you know said that it pissed off surgeons. I have found it to be an extremely effective round in ballistics gel through barriers. It has been very consistent as far as velocity goes and accurate to boot. Number five. This is an option for you if you run a subcompact gun. You never anticipate having to shoot through barriers. You don't want any chance of over penetration whatsoever, but you need it to go through clothes without having a problem. Sound like a lot of people. That round is the 115 grain, this one's dirty and old too, 115 grain critical duty or defense ammunition. The critical defense ammo is not rated to penetrate any barriers at all. In fact, it has issues. It comes apart when you start hitting things with it, but it is very good in soft tissue, especially if you're just shooting the heavy clothing protocol or bear gel. It has been very effective. It always penetrates between 9 and 13 inches. This is a much shallower penetrator. It dumps its energy very quickly to eliminate almost all risk of over penetration, and the bullet performs every time within that standard. This is not the option you want if you're on duty or expecting to have to do any kind of barrier penetration, though for most people in their day-to-day -day life, this is going to work exceptionally well. Uh, I think it's in a brass case now, though, which kind of sucks because I like nickel cases because nickel cases cut down on corrosion. They also allow you a better chamber check if you need to press check the firearm. Boot for thought. So, number six on this list was a real surprise to me when I found it, and I actually fell in love with the round, and that is the Federal 138 grain segmented jacketed hollow point Syntec Defense. Long name. It's a really cool blue lipstick looking bullet with a hollow point that doesn't look like it would do much. However, this round is not actually designed to expand. The initial impact and fluid entering the cavity actually forces the, the front of the projectile apart in three pedals that shear off creating six to eight inch wound tracks of their own and the core base penetrates at 12 to 18 inches. In my testing, not through all barriers, but through plain gel, heavy clothing, um, wallboard, sheetrock, it has done it consistently. Glass, metal, forget about it. It doesn't work the way it's supposed to, just going to be honest with you. But for most of those things that your average everyday citizen would run into if they were to find themselves in a defensive situation, this shit performs very, very well. You're looking at 11 or 1,050 feet per second, 338 foot-pounds of energy. Pretty cool. Uh, and I don't remember if I told you on the uh, Hornady Critical Defense, but we're looking at 1,135 feet per second and 329 foot-pounds of energy. You notice a trend? We stay pretty close to that same marker the whole way across. So next up is kind of a wild card, kind of a weird round. Uh, when I first saw it, I wasn't sure what to make of it until I shot it into some ballistics gel, and I was thoroughly impressed with the round. 
It still gives me the heebie-jeebies a little bit, which is the reason I don't technically carry it, though I do run it in one of the magazines for firearms, uh, my rifle stuff. It just functions really well out of that rifle, but I have never seen anything to give me pause that it wouldn't function exactly as intended because it has every time I put it into ballistics gel and every time I put it through a barrier. And that is the Fort Scott Munitions TUI. Specifically, this is the 115 grain, but they also make it in 80 grain. Now, one of the knocks against this stuff was a brass case. However, they have a plus P variant now that is nickel plated. I've shot some of that. It's scary. So this stuff is doing, the 80 grain is doing 1,340, 74 feet per second for 335 foot pounds of energy. The 115, which is this guy, is doing 1,140 feet per second for 332 foot pounds of energy. Now, if you step up to the 80 grain plus P, which is a scary round, we're talking 1,564 feet per second at 434 foot-pounds of energy. Now, this is another great option for you people that live in not-so-free states where you can't have expanding bullets. Again, dumbest thing I've ever heard. Um, this guy is designed because of the way the bullet is tapered, that it tumbles upon impact, hence the TUI. It does not give a shit what you shoot it through until it hits a hydrostatic medium, and then that shit starts doing cartwheels, making a nasty wound channel, Penetration has always been very consistent for me, somewhere between 11 and 15 inches on the most part. Didn't matter what barrier I put it through, it dumped its energy the same way every time. Really neat round. I've been impressed with it. That's the Fort Scott's 9mm TUI. Now on to number 8. I have this one in a 40 cal because I don't have any left in 9mm. I need to go get some more. But that is a solid copper offering from Barnes. And that is the Barnes TAC XP. The 115 grain variant of the Barnes TAC XP is a plus P. It's doing 1125 feet per second. Keep in mind it's a longer bullet because of that solid copper and a very deep hollow point. Giving you 323 foot pounds of energy. It makes a beautiful blackened copper rose or flower petal design. It's nasty. It's not as barrier blind as you would think. I have seen issues with it hitting the metal, hitting the sheetrock, it bending the tip in, and it not achieving full expansion. That said, it doesn't tend to over penetrate. You just don't get as good of a wound channel. So that round kind of looks like this guy here. So we've got nickel case, a big gigantic hollow point. The nine mil hollow point is also very large. Like I said, it's not as good as some, but it's way better than a lot. Uh, and I've been pretty impressed with it um, for what it will do. Uh, it's also run really well out of pistol caliber carbines. Another one, TUI also does. So next up, and this guy, number nine, we have an old standby. We have the Spear Gold Dot 124 grain plus P. I am not a big Gold Dot fan. And the reason being is because in the barrier testing, it fails a lot. However, in most of the mediums you're going to encounter, as an everyday concerned citizen that's trying to protect your own life, liberty, and everybody around you, it's going to do exactly what you want. Just be aware that if you plan on shooting through auto glass and some kind of weird raid um, on the Snickers bar, it's probably going to over penetrate, okay? Glass does fucked up shit to a bullet. But that round is everybody's favorite. Super pretty looking. Has a gold dot in the middle and it expands into that beautiful flower, which it does not do through any form of barrier. But I will say it's a good round. I've been impressed with it. It's just not as good as some of the others on this list, but it is better than a lot of the ones that didn't make this list. So we're looking at 1,220 feet per second, 410 foot-pounds of energy. So that's kind of a smoking round for a 124 plus P. Last on the list is one that'll surprise you because it surprised me. It is the Remington UMC 115 grain jacketed hollow point. No plus P, no frills, no idea how this works, okay? But this bullet is super simple. Brass jacket. If I was running PCCs for my option and I needed a bunch of them, this is what I would do. I will say this does terrible through uh, auto glass and steel. However, through wallboard, plywood, it does excellent. It really did every time. I, I've never had one over penetrate there. Over penetrated bad in glass and metal because it smashes in the tip and it shoots through like a full metal jacket, doesn't deviate on its path and just wrecks shit on the way out. It's been very consistent, though, in the normal forms of media that you would find. And if I had to outfoot a lot of things, say for a shit-hit-the-fan situation, if that's where your brain's at, and I needed a lot of defensive ammo that I could count on where over-penetration was no longer a concern, that's a really inexpensive way to do it. And I've tested hundreds of rounds of this because I couldn't believe it kept working. So now we'll go to three honorable mentions. I know, I bet you didn't see a Remington Green and White box coming on that list, did you? So on to the three 
that I have that are kind of unique, kind of weird, but if you can get them, they're great. The first one is Underwood Loading Plus P Plus 124 Grain High Shock. This is a 124 grain version of the famous 9 BPLE load, which was used by, I think it was the Tennessee Highway Patrol. Uh, you were looking at like 1,500 feet per second. It was a smoke show of a round. Uh, it's very unassuming when you look at it. It is a very old school hollow point design, but this shit is nasty when it hits things, but not nasty enough to break my top 10. Next up from there is one from Federal, and that is the Punch. It does not perform as well as the HST, though it does perform pretty damn well. So, and again, those situations, heavy clothes, bare gel, maybe some sheetrock, you're going to be okay. It doesn't tend to overpenetrate, though I will say, in steel and in glass, fails every time. Smashes the tip, punches right through every damn thing. I've never seen it actually do what it was supposed to there. However, everywhere else, it's pretty damn good, with pretty impressive wound tracks, comparable to some of the nicer rounds out there, and this stuff's not that expensive. I like having some uh, inexpensive things on the list because not everybody can go out and buy a $100 box of ammo just to run through their stuff when there are less affordable options that may not be as good, but they may meet the needs of what you have to do. So again, that is the 124 grain Federal Punch, and they even actually seal the primers on these guys, which is kind of cool for a concealed carry ammo. And last but not least is another Underwood offering. Underwood loads the 147 grain XTP from Hornady. The XTP is a very old projectile design. However, that doesn't mean that it's no longer viable. You can get some crazy shit out of these. Now, I will tell you, I have loaded this round up really, really, really hot. Smoking hot. And it actually, at about 1210, will shear, shear all of the pedals off the bullet at impact with the gel and just punches right on through. Like it wasn't even stopping. I don't recommend that hot. However, at about 1120 feet per second in a 9mm plus P platform, Underwood's loading is actually pretty good. It's fast enough that you get really nasty, devastating expansion. Nowhere near over penetration. We're talking in that 9 to 14 inch range. It's going to be just fine. Somebody's going to balk at this eventually and talk about 14 inches. Nobody's 14 inches deep. You got bone, man, and different densities of stuff. It's not a consistent density. Not to mention the fact that most people get shot in their hands first because you're threat focused. Maybe you have to take an oblique shot. You got to think about these things. Bullets do weird shit when they enter any form of hydrostatic material. They just do. Any form of biomaterial, bullets do weird things, man. That's how people get shot in the shoulder and it comes out of their toe. But this round been super impressive by it. I like the Hornady XTP designs. It's a boat tail. It's actually got a really nice ballistic coefficient for a 9mm. So heads up, you guys loading 350 Legend, you can do that. Just be careful with the speed. However, if you were doing it and you were planning on shooting deer, speed's not really the problem. There isn't. You just need penetration and some bitch will do it. So it's a nasty little round. It's an old school cool, the 147 grain Hornady XTP loaded in plus P velocities. So guys, those are my top 10 defensive carry loads for 9 mil. I have tested and vetted all of them a lot. If your favorite round did not make this list, careful, it might be on the no-go list, and I'll tell you why on all those two. Some of that shit will flat shock you. Everything here I've vetted, I've shot hundreds of rounds of it, in most cases at minimum 50 rounds of it. I've shot it through all of the barriers multiple times, ballistics gels, tested for accuracy, tested for long distance accuracy out to 75 yards on a ransom rest, and tested for reliability in at least five different firearms with most of these. I've never had a problem out of them. I've gathered velocities on most of them from subcompact size to full size and tested them in gel. So that's how I learned little things like some shit does not do very well out of a longer barrel. It's going too fast. So guys, there you go. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. I'm Uncle Freedom. You have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you soon.